We just got off an emotional season opener at Spring Valley. We're here at stop number two at Lake Winnebago. A fishery that's known for its diversity, meaning anglers can target these walleyes in many different ways. Lake Winnebago is notorious for being a here one day, gone the next type of fishery. And part of that is because of the migration, but part of that is also because of the food source. There's fish everywhere throughout the system. There's bait everywhere throughout the system. It's known as a, I'm on a super strong pattern in day one, and I'm gonna catch 13 to 15 pounds. And on day two, I'm gonna fall flat on my face and look like an idiot. Who the heck am I? I'm, 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 a, I'm an old guy that's been around the fishing business for quite some time, and particularly the walleye tournament fishing side of things. I started as a fishing guide back in the mid 80s, right on the Canadian border on Lake of the Woods, Rainy Lake, of which Rainy Lake is where they launched essentially pro and co walleye tournaments with the professional walleye trail in 1992. So I've been around tournament fishing since its inception then, and either been a fan, knowing the anglers, or been a part of the organizations putting on these events from PWT into the FLW, into the National Walleye Tour, into the Cabela's events, and all the versions thereof. So here's the deal, here's the deal about walleye fishing. Over my time frame, I've watched these tournaments grow in size, um, watched prize money grow, I've watched anglers mature, they've gone from kids to full grown adults and had these full careers um, explode. And the one thing that always happens when you go to these towns and you travel around and watch the anglers is that somebody will, you'll be eating dinner some night and somebody will be going, you know, what's the National Walleye Tour? Who are these guys, right? They just, the only thing is, is they got a bigger, fancier boat they got some sponsors so they can run around and fish all the time. How could they possibly know more than I do? Well, let me tell you, young man, throw your hat in the ring because this is anything but easy, especially when you add the pressure of trying to find fish when everybody else is trying to find these fish. And that's the part that I think really separates the National Walleye Tour from every other league. It isn't just a community event with a bunch of community anglers fighting over the same body of water the same weekend every single year. These anglers are forced to go to new bodies of water at new times of year, forced to use new techniques because everything is emerging and changing all the time. There is no circuit in fishing, at least in walleye fishing, where that has as many variables as the National Walleye Tour. So it's post-spawn right now, middle of May, and it's been nice and warm. So a lot of things have been cr progressing quickly as far as fish coming all the way down the whole system, getting out into the lake, getting onto their summertime structure. This is our last full day of practice, um, us using night crawlers, uh, slip bobbers, and casting cranks. So those are kind of our three primary things we figured out. And as far as structure, as you can see, uh, we're fishing right up in this reed bed. They call it the cane and uh, definitely a summertime pattern out here. So really fun way to fish. And once in a while you catch a nice tourney grade fish. John doesn't have much of a track record on Winnebago, but he's super excited simply because he now gets to toy around with the forward facing sonar. He believes this is an opportunity to find one of those off the wall patterns, one of those Lake Erie, Sault Ste. Marie type patterns that nobody else has discovered, and he's gonna try and blow the entire field away. That is a turning grade fish right there. I'll tell you what, probably a 19 incher. So you can kind of feel the spot, and this one's super cool. It's got just general lake current as it funnels down here into the river. And then, uh, so that current's hitting the reed edge. And that awesome hard edge and it's like 
any predator would be sitting there, free food just coming right past them. So always fun when you get a bite on a spot like that that looks so good, like there has to be one there. Now I'm gonna switch to this magical little crankbait. It's a Berkeley Custom. I have no idea where I got it, but I do know I have three of them, so. Get one fish casting. And I forget about my obligations to my partners to try trolling. We'll go check one more. Aaron, I know that's your vote, right? <laughs> one more cane bed? John Hoyer has been a shot of positive energy into the walleye world. There's something about some people that just hits you when you meet them, interact with them, and John's always had that, that really unique, genuine love of the sport. When John looks and researches a body of water, he is looking at it from a perspective that I don't think any walleye angler has ever looked at these bodies of water because he's going places and doing things and trying things that are just pushing the outer limits of the industry and that's awesome. Now he's had enough success on tour that it's pretty neat to watch John. All right, we got one fishing. Because when John is now utilizing the entire arena to his benefit, he's got great sponsors, his boat's always clean, his truck's always clean, he's always clean, he's very well spoken, and when he walks into a room, everybody takes notice. And John can use that now, and he is using that now. So he's got a little bit of this intimidation factor going on that he's John Hoyer. And I know something that you don't know, because I'm John Hoyer, because I think out of the box. And he knows he thinks out of the box, and it's a gift. Oh, we got a double. That one looks like a walleye too. Um, it's not, it's a white bass. No, nope, drum. It is a white bass, should have known. We were thinking about entering the World White Bass Championship. Is every tournament gonna be a win? No. But is he gonna be looking at things and trying things different than everybody else? Yeah. Should they be scared? Without a doubt. We're in for a long day here. We got a lot of looking to do. After Max's first tournament, the pressure has only been amplified. To use common fisherman vocabulary, Max bombed the first tournament. Really, really wasn't what I wanted it to be. I mean, with JJ's finish and everything, that, that was uh, an amazing thing to be part of, but uh, you know, my own personal goals kind of got shattered. He's looking at it. He's on it. He's gonna eat it. I hate bobber fishing, but I love it, but I hate it for that, that reason right there. The last few fish have looked at my bait, but they haven't reacted very positively. They'll come up, look at it, swim away. That one finally came up and reacted to it, but didn't commit fully and just bit the tail. What I'm going from is I'm going from a traditional jig head with a longer piece to just a singular hook, kind of dropping that profile down a little bit. Then I added a single split shot on there. This singular hook falls really slow and I'm trying to power cork these fish. So I'm trying to quick hit them, hit them fast. You know, adding a little split shot, I'm gonna get that down just a little bit faster. Why would you not, like, how could you look at that and be like, nah, fam. There are a number of strong local sticks in this tournament, but I would say the two prohibitive favorites are Corey Springle and Max Wilson. Both Corey and Max grew up learned to walleye fish on Winnebago. Corey's won a championship, an NWT championship, and another regular season on this tournament. Corey Springle, champion, we're here in Winnebago. Max grew up on this lake. His grandpa took him fishing here. If I had to call anywhere my home, home body water, it'd be Lake Winnebago. Ever since I, I could remember, I, you know, I was coming up here fishing with my dad, fishing with my grandpa. Um, you know, this is where 
the walleye bug started. My first ever tournament was on this body of water. I got an idea now. The pressure is on for Max to do well. He wisely chose to put in some time in some local tournaments, then the next day entered another local tournament and got the W. And if you know anything about Max, when the ball's rolling, it's rolling fast and it's rolling downhill. And all of a sudden it's just game on. There we go. That's a good one too. 16 inter, that's flat too. They either thunk it or it's like a, just a little grab. I don't like the little grab. I can do really good or do really horrible um, with having so much history on it. So, you know, it's kind of, you got to kind of take a lot of those memories out, but you still got to keep them with an earshot to be like, okay, well, I remember these similar situations there might be here, but don't get any preconceived notions that this is where I have to fish because this is where they always are. That's nine times or 10 times out of 10, that's never true. Let's go. That's a turn grade fish right there. Okay, so the middle of those is gonna put you 12 pounds. If you can do 12 pounds a day, you'll be okay. That's a nice fish right there. You know, really just been trying to repair that confidence and, and get in the right mental mindset. I wasn't there for Spring Valley. I was kind of in a, in a little bit of a dark place, but you know, ever, you know, since then we've worked a lot. We're kind of in fishing season and, um, you know, starting to, on the upswing a little bit. So hopefully we can relay that into a good week. Early on in the walleye industry, it became obvious that a lot of the, the choices of the body of water were so large and so encompassing that it became impossible for anglers to dissect these in a reasonable amount of time. So what ended up happening is that little groups of anglers started to form and share friendly information amongst each other. These friendly information exchanges grew, you know, obviously uh, formed bonds and these anglers eventually form teams and some of them have now have financial arrangements amongst each other trying to help each other move up the leaderboard. I mean even though this is the pinnacle of the walleye market I think it's less than I think it's one in four anglers and the National Walleye Tour is actually going to cash a check. So that means that you've really got to be on your game to get into the money. You need as much help and friends as you can get. So like it or not there are groups of anglers that work together, share information. The levels of information that get shared really vary amongst team, but it is part of the sport. Uh, we've, been on a, we've been on a pretty good bite these past few days ever since day one we got here. We, Started to figure something out. So today we're just gonna go try hitting some new spots, but we're gonna keep our our stuff. We know that there's fish for sure. Kind of keep that hidden for today, and pretty excited. Owen's first tournament was solid, if not spectacular, for his first tournament ever on the highest level of professional competition. Owen held his own. Coming from Montana to Lake Winnebago, this is a huge adjustment for Owen. He's used to fishing massive river impoundments, fishing deep water. Right now, the Winnebago bite is super shallow. And how Owen responds and adjusts, it's a complete unknown. Yeah, I think what's happening here is uh, we've had a pretty uh, cold spring and all of a sudden it got super warm and the water warmed up really, really quick, quickly. And uh, I think these walleyes are feeding on crawdads. And when uh, 
Crawdads usually come out of hibernation is around uh, 65 degree water and about five feet of water. And I think that's part of the reason why we are uh, getting them in shallow in all these big rocks. Dewey Chelm is the hottest walleye fisherman on the planet right now. Maybe Tom Wynn is a close second. That momentum eventually has to end. All good things must come to an end. Does it end here? It certainly could. Practice has not been looking promising for Dewey. See, we just had to start Start trolling. Now we're catching. He's probably 15, not 16, though. Jeff, I've only fished here twice. First time, I loved it. Caught tons of fish. Uh, the second time we were here, the last time, had a horrible finish, like 90th, 100th, last. I don't know. It was horrible. Seeing how it was going to set up with the different conditions as far as weather, like I was super excited. Like we had a ton of ideas that we wanted to go try and thought we're gonna work and be the winning pattern and all that stuff and um, none of it worked. What are you catching them on? Flicker shads, sevens. Oh, I got you. So you've been doing one pass, you've just done one pass and then how many? Uh, well, we had a double, but that's it. Oh, okay. We're still on our first pass. There's something about him that separates him from a lot of other anglers. It's a quiet confidence that you can feel, right? There's some people that are just chatterboxes and they gotta talk, 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 and they're gonna talk your arm off and they're gonna distract you and they're gonna be at the rules meeting and playing all sorts of mind games with people and, you know, or, or they're floating around boats in the morning, not Dewey. Dewey's gonna be the stoic guy in the back with his mouth shut. secret baits that are gonna get it done tomorrow. Right there. See that? Can you get it? Get it? Can you see it? Yeah, you can't get it, can you? Dude, they were so damn finicky today. Oh, we ain't trolling this week, kids. I'm so anti-trolling, I took my kicker off, taking my trolling rods out. I don't even have a regular crankbait in the boat right now. Just gonna cycle through fish and hopefully get to that threshold. I'm hoping I can get that two to three pound average, two and a half, three and a half, you know, that range. I think the big thing tomorrow is not get nervous because it'll be very easy to get nervous with uh, the conditions. This has been an afternoon bite, that morning bite sucks. So it's gonna have to sit there, grind it, just play the numbers game. It's gonna be calm tomorrow, hopefully knock on wood. Hey man, looking forward to it. Let's yeah. go back on some. Simple goal, beat him. My goal, beat him. Yeah. Reach for the stars, young one. Now we're gonna go out, we're gonna catch five. Heck, we might even catch six. But we're gonna have fun tomorrow. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and bye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I mean, I go into any tournament super optimistic. I, I want to win it. And with seven days of practice, there's that opportunity anywhere we fish. The guys I travel with, the information we get in seven days, I literally have a chance to win every tournament. But I'm also a realist, so coming into Lake Winnebago, it comes with an asterisk where I, I'm not going to tell myself I, want to sur I need to survive Lake Winnebago, but in reality, history shows I need to survive Lake Winnebago. The margin for error is slim. You can maybe afford to have one bad tournament and still make the top 40 at the end of the year. Two bad tournaments, you're not going to make it. 
This is ruthless competition. If you're not on your game, you're not going to be in the year-end champion.